Beyonce asked for open marriage. I canceled the wedding and dodged a bullet. True story. I've been listening to your channel for about a month now. I've always planned to send in my story after just hearing one of your videos. Here it is. I hope you enjoy. Really, my hopes are that people will learn from my story. Do as I did. If your girl asks for an open marriage relationship, for those who like a quick upfront story. My fiance asked me to open up our relationship going into the marriage. I dumped her and canceled the wedding. I'm a single man now. When I met my ex fiance, she told me that she wanted to only be with one other guy the rest of her life. She had just lost her virginity two years prior to us meeting. We were 24 at the time. Was that true? Was she ran through? I don't know, can we really tell? I mean, when we first had sex, she didn't feel like she was without walls or anything. It felt nice, but really didn't matter to me. Actually, this is something she voluntarily told me I never even asked. She never even asked how many people I've been with. That's a silly question. Don't ask a woman how many men she's been with because you never know. We moved into my apartment together two years after dating monogamously. We pretty much started dating monogamously, immediately. We didn't waste any time. I really liked her. She, she really liked me. She made me wait about four months before we had sex. I was okay with that. I felt like I was doing the right thing. I even started attending her church every Sunday. Church was very important to my ex-fiance. It was also a big deal when she invited me to church. She invited me to her church on date number four. I believe she almost cried talking to me about it, saying how much church means to her and how important it is that she's invited me to come to her church. I get to meet all her friends and some of her family members. My ex Melissa used to read the Bible to me all the time. She sent me verses and things like that every morning. I took it as if she really liked me and she wanted me to be a part of it. Now I didn't grow up in a religious household. I've always believed in higher power. My parents, not so much. Actually, they were the complete opposite. But I don't know, I experienced something at a younger age. It truly made me a believer, but I couldn't tell you which religion was correct or anything. I pray sometimes, and I do remember attending church with a friend. My next door neighbor, I came home and told my family about it. My dad joked. I remember telling him someone in the church called the Holy Ghost. It truly scared the crap out of me. We're just sitting there, me and my friend playing with army men on the bench. We found these army men in the back room at the church. Green army men glued to surfboards. They were pretty dusty, but we cleaned them off. And during church, we sat there and played with them. Anyway, the woman next to us got up and started screaming and shaking. Her eyes rolled in the back of her head and everything. It was scary. I looked at my friend and he just looked at me and started playing with Green Army Man again. We switched seats. I don't want to sit next to her, but he told me she was just having the Holy Ghost and she'll be okay. His mother pulled us out and his mother went over and grabbed her. It was the scariest thing ever, man. I told my parents about it and they sat there and just cracked jokes about it, pretty much just making fun of religion and things like that. I didn't really find the jokes funny. Here's my thing, if someone wants to believe in something, or religion, and it makes them a good person, then what's wrong with it? What's the problem? So I actually was pretty excited to learn that my ex fiance Melissa, was very religious, because I was very interested in it. To be honest with you, attending church was fun. I started to participate. I show up on the weekends and go to events for the church, help them raise money. I love that. I fell in love with it. I attended Bible study. I learned about the Bible and everything. Believe it or not, learning the Bible is what helped me walk away from my ex fiance when she asked me this question. It still bothers me today because she's so religious and she knows the word better than anyone else, but she asked me for this open relationship, open marriage. I have no idea why she think that's okay. I questioned her. She wouldn't respond. I ended up blocking her eventually. So the same week Melissa moved in with me is the same week I proposed to her. We had been together for a couple years and things was going strong. 
We really, really loved each other, and everyone in the church pushed us to get married, her parents and, and even my parents. My parents calmed down a lot since I was younger. They don't make fun of people that are religious or anything. That's a whole different story, but it was pretty bad. But my parents respect my ex's parents, and they respected my parents. One of the first things. One of the first things. Her father asked my father if they attended church and if he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. My dad respectfully told him that he's not a religious person. Never was, probably never will be. But he has nothing against what they believed in. My father and Melissa's father actually became pretty close. Melissa's father did not judge my dad at all. I truly thought I found a great girl and thought I'd be like my parents or other married couples that I know, married and happy. All of the older married couples I know only married once. How'd people get so lucky? Nowadays, you can't even trust a girl that claims she's religious. So living together and being engaged started off great. We barely argued. We truly loved each other. The night after proposing to my ex, I thought that I struck gold when she read me this heartfelt letter. It was the following night, and she told me she wrote it all day. It's handwritten, and I'll attach here, but man, I thought I made the right choice. I freaking cried for this bish. I know a lot of you guys will probably never know what it's like to experience loving someone and feeling loved by a spouse, but that moment felt so good. Dear soulmate, thank you. Thank you for loving me so intensely and intentionally that you would get down on one knee after asking for my family's blessing and then asking me to be your wife. I do not now, nor will I ever, take this lightly. While I am overjoyed at the thought of marrying you, I am not blinded by love in this moment. I understand the significance of the oath that we will take in front of our family and closest friends. I understand that this life isn't likely to end with happily ever after written across the sky. I understand what it looks like for a spouse to live up to their vows in the most difficult of situations. And there is no other person in this world I could imagine experiencing any of it with. Like I told you in the beginning, if you don't love and support an individual enough to care for them through years of illness or tragedy, you shouldn't consider marriage. I do love and support the person you are more than I ever thought possible. I do not expect a fairy tale, nor do I expect you to take responsibility for my happiness or actions. I do, however, expect to experience more joy than I ever thought possible. I expect to be overwhelmed, blessed, and humbled in ways that I cannot imagine. For every good day and hardship, I will be on your side. I will stand with you and fight for you and be your second biggest cheerleader. Totally understand your mom will always be first. I will annoy you to no end and stare at you awkwardly way too long because I just can't help it. I will swallow my pride and admit when I'm wrong. I will show you grace as I have been shown and I will work to progress as an individual and as your partner. While I know our life won't always be puppies and rainbows, I am certain that it will be full of love, laughs, and ridiculous adventures. We will travel, eat all of the foods, and greet strangers in languages we have not yet heard of. I will make it a goal to remain as affectionate as we are now, and maybe even kick it up a notch, because it's our love language and it makes us who we are as one. I will tickle you and absolutely expect you to not do the same in return. I mean it. I'll roll with your big ideas and help you bring them to fruition. And I'll politely call you out when I know you could be doing something better. I know you will do the same. I will embrace you in every new season of life. And I pray that you will do the same. Your family will be my family and mine will be yours. For this I am eternally grateful. I thank you with every ounce of me for loving me so well and for giving me an unlimited amount of days to try do the same. It's been a while since our families met and we were formally engaged. Engaged to be together for the rest of our lives. And honestly, I can't wait for the adventure to begin. 
to start this journey and step into an all new life that we can call ours. But before I begin with this letter to my fiance, to you, I want you to know that I love you. I love you truly, madly, deeply, and I've never been so sure of anything in my life as I am of us. Our life together will be wonderful, of that I'm sure, but I also realize that we'll have some ups and downs in this relationship. It won't be a smooth sail always, but with the two of us together, every ride will be one to remember. And don't you worry, baby, because even though I may look all sweet and dainty, I will stand next to you like a rock if you ever need me. Yes, we'll have our fights, our little differences, but that's what relationships are about, right? And now coming to our wedding, phew, it's going to be a task, you know, and baby, let me warn you beforehand that I may unknowingly give you a hard time. Uh, bear in mind that I've been dreaming about this day for way too long, and I want it to be perfect. But I won't go all insane over every little detail, I promise. Just make sure you have enough leaves planned to come shopping with me. That way, you'll even get a little peek into what you've really signed up for. But all said and done, no matter how it all goes, for me, my fairy tale wedding just needs you to be standing next to me with that big toothy smile of yours that I absolutely adore. I love you, baby, and I want you to know that I'll give your parents the same amount of love, care, and respect as I do to my own. I know that you too are already trying your best to bond with my parents, and I love you so much for that. My mom and dad mean the world to me, and to see you bond with them just makes my heart swell with happiness. I want to share the exact same rapport with my in-laws. Help me through the initial few days, will you? So, dear husband-to-be, I hereby declare that I'm all ready and willing and excited and can't wait to get married to you and make you all mine officially, and maybe I don't know much, but I know this much is true. I am blessed because I am loved by you. Now just hurry up and get married to me. After she read this to me, then handed me the sheet she wrote it on. We both kneeled and I prayed for us. She then prayed for us. It was a feeling I will never forget in my entire life. I'm close to saying that. I don't regret anything. That feeling was just amazing. I really started to study the Bible, and I first focused on what the Bible says about what a husband should be and what a wife should be. I wanted us to work. Things are going to be great. We both worked contributing to my apartment bills. Wedding was being planned out, so we sought out everything and was directed to reach out to her father for payments and deposits. I didn't spend a dime, so canceling everything was no issue for me. I wasn't losing out on anything. Before I canceled anything, I did reach out to her father and sent him all contact information to try and get deposits back or whatever. So we were out for dinner, late night, at a pub. One night, my ex and I decided to bar hop, something we both talked about but never tried until this night. It actually was fun, us together and us being comfortable with one another. It felt safe. Nothing either of us would do on our own or with others. After we drank at the last bar, we sat for a minute. A was told that there was a pub open that still had an open kitchen. The bar we were at closed their kitchen. We walked down to the pub and got food, and it was pretty quick because people were leaving because the pub was going to close in a couple hours. We order a bunch of random food, so we're eating, and my ex is just yapping on about stuff. That was very unusual, wanting to live a free life and talking about YOLO this and YOLO that. After a while, I stopped listening until she told me that she believes that all married couples should open up their marriage. She told me how here parents once had an open marriage when she was younger, but they closed it. But apparently, the open marriage is the reason why they stayed together. According to my ex, this is something every married couple does, and she assured me that my parents did the same, and I just don't know it. I told my ex that an open marriage is not something I believe in, and I won't be a part of one. My ex's exact words were, well, I guess we should cancel the wedding. I looked at her. She gave me RBF, resting bish face. I was quiet the rest of the night. 
She tried talking to me, but I ignored her. Canceling everything was my exact plan. The following morning, I woke up to her being sweet, acting as if she didn't basically ask me to open our relationship. I told her she needed to start packing her things and get the F out of my place. We're done. She started asking me, where's her engagement ring? And I told her I took it. She started claiming that she was going to call the police on me and said I stole her ring. I told her again. Please pack your shish and leave my place now. She started crying and my ex did indeed call the police on me. No one went to jail, but police told me that legally she didn't have to leave because she had mail coming to my apartment and she did pay bills. But since she was not on the lease, she has 30 days to move out. But I was told to do my own research to learn the law. The police asked if her if there was a place she could stay since I wanted her out. She ended up leaving that night. She cried to her mother on the phone and lied saying I was yelling at her and wanted to sleep with her best friend. That's why I'm canceling the wedding. This girl who's supposed to be so religious and righteous just told a complete lie to make me look evil. I was done with this witch. When she left, I started packing her things. I didn't care about a 30-day law. She was leaving. I sat everything in the lawn and sent her a picture and text telling her to come and get her shish before someone steals it. Then I blocked her. I called her dad, spoke to him, and surprisingly he was very calm. I told him why I didn't want to marry his daughter. I asked him to please tell his wife the truth and the story his daughter told about me wanting her best friend was complete lie. Just so you all know, I actually dated her best friend in high school before they became friends. I gave her father all the contacts he needed and wished him luck on getting his money back. I blocked my ex on everything except Cash App. She sent me one dollar six times with notes on it. They read, Cash App 1. Is my day truly over? Cash App 2. I've dreamed about... Cash App 3, my wedding day. Cash App 4, call me. Cash App 5, you are such. Cash App 6, a coward. Six different notes. Thanks for the six bucks. I bought stock, but I wasn't responding or taking her back. I didn't see or hear anyone getting her things. Maybe someone stole it. I don't know. I was done with her, and my ex was out of my life forever after that. I have zero desire to get into another relationship. I'm done.